evolutionary biology has been around for over a century, but almost all the focus has been on sort of the overt morphology or behavior of organisms, which doesn't really tell us the nuts and bolts of evolution, how evolution occurs in terms of, say, the proteins, what we call messenger RNAs inside cells and so on. So we're ultimately interested in trying to understand the me mechanisms, the mechanics, so to speak, from building blocks up of evolution. Darwin knew nothing about genetics. This was one of the big problems when he first worked, was he was one of the most knowledgeable biologists on the planet. I call him the big integrator. Uh, but he didn't know about Mendel's laws, even though Mendel had already written his paper. So he was kind of stuck in this not really knowing how evolution worked as a process. A phenomenon that we're very interested in is random genetic drift, the, the stochasticity, the randomness in evolution just due to parents contributing only one half of their genome uh, to their offspring. In terms of human health, evolution is really central uh, in most of the things we worry about in human health these days. COVID is a really good example. You're all hearing about these newly emergent strains. That's an evolutionary problem. Cancer is a genetic disease. It's essentially evolution of a new lineage of cells that we'd rather wasn't around in some of our tissues. So in all these other areas of uh, very important applied biology associated with human health are really basic problems in evolution that we hope we can contribute to. Mathematical theory plays a, a huge role in, in the work we do in trying to understand evolution. Evolution is a process by which gene frequencies change through time. That's a quantifiable uh, change in populations. And what we're trying to do is develop theory that tells us how fast gene frequencies can change through time uh, based on natural selection, based on mutation, changing one gene type to another. And then there's this diffusion process that we talk about called random genetic drift that causes uh, the noise in the evolutionary process that we'd like to quantify as well because at certain levels that can overwhelm the power of natural selection. So all these are really mathematical questions. One of the main advantages of being here is that ASU itself is an extremely broad university with expertise in all kinds of different areas, including applied mathematics. And so what I was given here is the opportunity to sort of bridge this gap between cell molecular biology on the one hand and more traditional evolutionary biology on the other hand. And what we're trying to do is to literally develop a new field that we call evolutionary cell biology. We have been fortunate to attract some of the best graduate students and postdoctoral fellows that one could ask for at this interface over the past few years. Uh, I think we're providing a really excellent setting for them to go on and carve this new niche in this new field, which we call evolutionary cell biology. So in that sense, uh, ASU has really been uh, a great foundational place to uh, start new careers for, for young scientists that they, in ways they can't do at other universities.